Right. 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 So, so uh, I'm running an office for the mayor called HOPE, Housing Opportunity Partnership and Engagement. And so we're looking at taking a different look at homelessness and poverty in San Francisco and recognizing that 10 years after Care Not Cash, there's a lot that's changed for the good. We have 5,000 units of supportive housing, but many of the individuals that are living in those supportive housing units are not necessarily thriving. And so there's still a situation on the streets. We were talking a little bit earlier about 6th Street, and one of the things that I'm uh, excited to be working on is that you may be familiar that for the past 10 years, there's been a charter adult school in the jails known as Five Keys. And that's been incredibly successful where individuals who are men and women in the jails have been able to get a high school diploma, a GED, or to become literate. And so we're going to be opening a Five Keys on 6th Street because one of the things in partnering with public safety is I think too often we get into the TL, we get into SOMA, and it's about pushing people around. It's about making people disappear, and that doesn't work so well. And so I don't think that that happens. And I'm really excited that we're partnering with some of the supportive housing uh, uh, hotels, and we're looking to bring an adult school right there so people have something positive to go to. One of the other initiatives that we're doing is known as WOOF, Wonderful Opportunities for Occupants and FIDOs. And so that's really about recognizing that as much as people are, are critical of panhandling, people need to generate income. And people make judgments about it and say, oh my God, you might be giving money to somebody on the street who's going to use that money for drugs and alcohol. And I have as yet to speak in a room in San Francisco. Well, it can be. Uh, I have as yet to speak in a room where they're not people who work to generate income for drugs and alcohol, right? I mean, it's just society. And so we need to just take the value out of it. So what we're recognizing is we've had a 25% increase in the number of dogs that have gone into our shelter system. Small dogs mostly. Many of them are puppies, adolescent dogs. These are dogs that are not socialized, not house trained, or are rambunctious. And so they're unlikely to get adopted and likely to be euthanized. And so I want to say we have a great animal care and control system. Average nationally, only 35% of dogs that are presented to a shelter ever leave that shelter. 85% here in San Francisco. But we can do better. And so what we're doing, we just had our first uh, training classes. We're partnering with Community Housing Partnership. And we're going to stipend people. We're going to be trained by an animal behaviorist who live in CHP housing. And they're going to foster these dogs and basically socialize them, enable them to be adoptable so that this dog has a second chance. And for some of these individuals, and we know that some of the people panhandling have housing, but you know, living on SSI, living on CAP is very difficult to do in San Francisco. You have virtually no disposable income to do anything with. So we're going to be paying between $50 and $75 a week for that program. So these are small examples. We've been very involved in reimagining the access point to shelters. People know that people line up at Glide every night at 3 in the morning and at 6 in the morning, they clean the streets, people run across the street, then they get back in line, the fights take place, the police show up. It's not very optimal for a handful of 90-day beds. And then people have to walk to MSC South to get wristbanded so they get a priority later on in the day to get beds that are turned back in. So people are walking a mile and a half from Glide to MSC and then a mile and a half back to get a meal at St. Anthony's or at Glide. It's not a smart way to do things. And so we're looking at using the 311 system where somebody can put their name in and be lottery for a 90-day bed or be lottery for a one-night bed. And there are initiatives where we're looking to provide cell phones to people that are case managed or in our changes system that are accessing our shelter system. We recognize right now many of the people that are in shelter are not appropriate for shelter. There are people that are elderly. There are people that are serious medical issues. And being in a shelter is not it's not an appropriate placement. We recognize that we need to have a shelter in San Francisco that has a higher medical component, something between a shelter and a nursing home, so that we're helping some of the individuals because our population is aging. So I'm very excited about what's going on uh, with us at Hope. I've had a lot of good feedback. I welcome the controversy. I think that it's about time that we have a, a campaign around homelessness in this city to make people think about the fact that there are a lot of successful programs and initiatives that are taking place, but we also have to connect the dots. And I, that's what I'm about, is making this system accountable and functional. And I welcome any questions, and I welcome partnering with the Alliance. I appreciate all that you do to, to elevate this, this neighborhood that is a very diverse family neighborhood. Yes, Dean? I have a question. Yes, sir. Some of you may know I'm a big animal rights activist. I mean, you, you see me on Facebook. I got little Fredita. We did some fostering and stuff. 
One of my suggestions with that um, is have you talked with the Leg Up Dog Rescue? No, I've talked, I'm very familiar with Haley at Rocket, so Rocket is who I've talked to, and so she's involved, but I would welcome what's I, the, I can the put rescue. you in touch with Kate right. Singleton. It's called the Leg Up Dog Rescue. They use the same model where um, people foster, well, we go in and we rescue the dogs before they're set to be euthanized, and then we put them in families or in homes, and then we socialize them. We have a meetup once a month. Um, you know, for, and this is specifically for small dogs. Stuff. That's great. That's what we're that's what we're focused. But on. it sounds like the same kind of model that you're talking about. They're already doing it, so maybe they can help in some way. Indeed, as you know, there are more dogs than kids in San Francisco. So the possibilities for people having jobs as dog groomers, vet techs. Scott Wiener's legislation requires that every dog walker in San Francisco. I know you do. That every dog walker in San Francisco has to go through a training program. The only current training program costs six hundred dollars to go through it. Why can't we create an enterprise that employs people in the TL and create an enterprise here just like you've seen in Delancey Street where for 300 we train people because hundreds and hundreds of people are going to go uh, through that. And, and you know, and as you know, um, dogs change people's lives and people can change the dogs' lives. And I view this as a second chance for people and a second chance for dogs. And I told Captain Garrity, I'm going to bring 200 chihuahuas to the TL and it's going to help you drive down crime more than anything you've done in the last year. Tell us about the dead chihuahua. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Can you talk more about how you're trying to improve the shelter reservation system? I'm not clear. Are you, are you adding a call-in number? Yeah, 311 basically. So, so somebody, how does that work? So basically, you would. So as long as you're in the changes system, so there, as you know, resource centers. That um, so Glide is a resource center, Mission Neighborhood Resource Center, United Councils, and the Bayview. And I'm missing another one, MSC South. And so you have to go in and finger image. But once you've done that, then you could call up and say, I would like to lottery for a 90-day bed. And then they would take information. Are you disabled? Can you, can, can you use an upper bunk versus a lower bunk? Can you get all the information? And then what we would do would be to partner. Twitter has an SMS or text-based system called Fast Forward. And so we would automatically generate a text message telling someone, You've been given a one-night bed. You've been given a 90-day bed. Or you could call through on one uh, and, and say, where am I? You know, this is, this is my name. And tell me whether or not I have access or if I have to use one of the resource centers to chair sleep that night. So people could still go to the resource centers if they wanted to, but they wouldn't have to. Because right now, people spend hours waiting in lines. And as you know, a line-based system discriminates against people that are elderly or disabled. And so I think that, you know, honestly, the current system, I think if somebody suited on an ADA, I think it would be very questionable. And I've met women in shelter who have had to choose between going to work or getting in line at 3 a.m. because they're afraid if they don't get a 90-day bed that they're going to be back out on the street. So I've met two women just in the four months that I've been there. They've both lost their jobs because they had to make what I think is a very bad choice. So I, I honestly believe that using this technology is going to free people's time to you know, keep appointments, see a therapist, go to five key school, do something other than running around and waiting a lot. Is this in effect now? It's what we're, so we're, where there is, a Jane Kim uh, did a, uh, so she did a hearing. I know her. I know you do. On <laughs> shelter access. And so right now we're finishing up a community process. We had a meeting this week about it. And so I, I think it's something that will probably happen in the next two to three months. I should give some good news that the Board of Supervisors just did the budget committee, met and made their recommendations on the budget process. And Jane Kim, we partnered with her and working with advocates and uh, providers, we added $3 million to the emergency shelter system. So $1 million is for shelters, uh, $1 million is for the resource centers, and $1 million is for rapid rehousing. Because we lost that money that the federal government, that Obama had provided through the stimulus program. And that's been a very successful program where you don't put people in shelter, but you stabilize them, you keep them from being evicted, particularly for families. It's been a huge thing. So with that, I would say that, um, you know, you know how to find me. Um, um, Wait, yes, I'll ask well, last, This will be the last question. Did you talk about issues around the shelter fairness initiative that came up last year, if I missed it because I came in late? Or, or so how is that a fairness? 
What, what, what well, is the that issue mean? that people on GA get to go to the head of the line and people who aren't on GA have almost no chance of getting these shelters? It so almost became a law. This know, is, so this is a balancing act between um, Care Not Cash, so individuals that sign up for Care Not Cash and they are identified as homeless, they no longer get the full benefit. They're limited to $59, or are given a shelter bed, and then they hopefully graduate into supportive housing. That's on one side, and one of the problems is that people oftentimes do not show up to use those beds, but they are reserved because if you don't have a bed for somebody who's a care not cash client, right. then they could turn around and say, well, I want my $400 benefit. Now, on the other side of the equation, the advocates have been more, uh, they've been more desirous of 90-day beds because they feel like knowing that you have a 90-day bed at next door, MSC enables you to stabilize, work with a case manager. So both of those tie up a bit of it. I think what I realize, Otto, is that right now there is not criteria that it, so if you miss more than two days of a 90-day reservation and you're not care, not cash, you're bounced out of that reservation. And there isn't that type of limit. And so I think what we're agreeing is that there needs to be a limit. It might not be two, it might be four or five, but you know, that, that basically that you're violating your contract if you don't show up. And we think that that will probably free up more beds. That's the approach that we're going to probably take. To get more beds to the non GA population. Yes. Especially around me with Chihuahuas. No. You really did.